This is Nelson Hernandez. We're both pastors right here in the Houston, Texas area. Uh, I'm actually the pastor of a church here called The Dwelling. And a couple of years ago, we launched Pastor Nelson and his family as a missionary and church planter into a massive community development just down the road that has attracted a huge Hispanic Latino population. This is a community with approximately 50,000 people living in it, and another 100,000 or more projected to move into this area over the years. You cannot drive through this community without sensing the incredible urgency of starting new churches in that community. We have already been working in this area, establishing relationships, a small group, the Bible study, English classes, and community events. Because of Pastor Nelson's work and the fruit that's bearing, our team continues to sense the need for a permanent presence in the community, which is why we sense Jesus is asking us to establish three different goals. Our first goal is to establish a permanent residency in the community where Pastor Nelson and his family could move into the community itself. Our second goal is to establish a small ministry center where Pastor Nelson could actually begin to work for the community out of. And our last goal would be to establish a permanent church presence in the community with maybe soccer fields and an opportunity to serve the community in an even more tangible way. Working together with you and other churches allows us to reach these goals not having to do it alone. We believe in the efforts in this community, and we believe there's an opportunity for a multiplication of churches and disciples to reach even more disconnected people. Thank you for your praying and support. God bless you. God bless. Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So uh, this is a wonderful day. We get to continue to celebrate Easter. I uh, just wanted to comment briefly on the video we just saw. We are partners. We're partners with Cristo Mi Salvador. Uh, we uh, set aside a portion of our offerings to support the work of Cristo Mi Salvador. Uh, they're in the process of trying to get a building in the uh, what they call the Santa Fe area where the ministry is taking place, where all this tremendous growth is taking place, uh, so that Pastor Nelson Hernandez, who has been at our church and visited us, he can live there in the community and continue the, the planting process. So I, want, I would invite you to pray about that. If you're interested in, in all, the, all that's going on, we'll give you more information later on. But it's exciting that God is, is moving um, what the opportunities that God is giving us to, to be a part of this mission as well. Easter is a, a movable feast. Uh, have you noticed that Easter is a different time every year. Uh, Easter comes, um, the reason why it, it's a movable feast, it's tied to the lunar calendar, not so much as the solar calendar. And we'll talk about that in a, in a, in a little bit, but um, a part of Easter, one, one of my pastors, uh, one of my professors said, Every Sunday is a little Easter. And every Easter is a big Sunday. So we have much to celebrate, the resurrection to celebrate, and what it means for our lives. So let's begin our worship this morning. Oh, 
house this morning, it's important that we speak truth, not only about ourselves, but about our God. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins before God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help. O oh Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh, you his saints. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Right 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory. of your son you raised up the fallen world through Jesus Christ our Lord one God now and forever Amen. you may be seated Our first reading this morning comes from Acts 3. <clears throat> While the lame man, who was now healed, clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's Astounded. And when Peter saw it, saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by your own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, 
and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. And our epistle comes from 1 John 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand. Hallelujah. We know Christ is being raised from the dead and will never die again. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord.
mercy and peace be to from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Ernest Hemingway wrote, if you're lucky enough to have lived in Paris as a young man, then wherever you go for the rest of your life, it stays with you. For Paris is a movable feast. That's what Easter is too. A movable feast. Wherever you go for the rest of your life, it stays with you. Easter is a movable feast. Easter is also a movable feast because it's a festival that moves around the calendar. Here's how Easter moves. Easter is the first Sunday after the full moon following the northern hemisphere's vernal equinox. So now you know. Actually, it's kind of significant in that in the first centuries of Christianity, the church recognized the importance of keeping Easter connected with the Jewish Passover meal. They knew this special day did not stand alone. It, it was not I, an I, isolated from the, where, the rest of God, what God was doing. It was the fulfillment of the plan. It was connected to the larger story. In particular, Easter was connected to the Jewish Passover meal. But the Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar based on the cycles of the moon. Unlike our standard Gregorian civil calendar, which is a solar calendar, which is based on the cycles of the earth going around the sun. Basically, our standard calendar is different from the Jewish calendar, so Easter moves around in order to stay as close as possible to Passover, the feast from the, the earlier, from earlier in God's unfolding plan of salvation, which celebrate God's working in time and space and in history to rescue His people. So Easter is a movable feast. The date moves, but it's always a feast. And like most important celebrations, we like to eat with food. It, we celebrate with food. For Easter, it, it might be jelly beans and peeps and Cadbury eggs and hard-boiled eggs and baked ham and grandma's mashed potatoes and, or fresh rolls, but it's always a feast. Easter is a movable feast. 
And it's most fitting that we feast when we celebrate, especially when we celebrate Easter, because feasting is and eating is something which is uniquely done by living things. Think about that. Only living things eat. Living bodies need fuel and energy. Living things eat. So every meal, every morsel, every feast, great or small, every sip, every bite, every meal is a celebration of life. Non-living things do not eat. Formerly living things do not eat. Dead things do not eat. But living things eat. Therefore, eating itself is a sign and celebration of life. During the week after the full moon, following the northern hemisphere's vernal equinox, you remember that formula? Around the year 33, A.D. 33, Jesus ate a meal with his friends. But after that Thursday's dinner, he was betrayed and arrested. On Friday, he was tried, convicted, stripped, beaten, and executed. He died hungry and thirsty. Death took care of his hunger, his aching stomach, and cracking lips were dealt with by death because dead people do not get hungry. Dead people do not get thirsty. Dead people do not eat. But then Sunday comes around, and it's time to feast. Easter is a feast. It's a celebration of life because Jesus eats, not ate, and not Jesus you see, no, Jesus eats. And because he lives flesh and blood and alive, living things eat. Here in Luke chapter 24, verse 41, Jesus asks his disciples, who are doubting and confused. He says, have you anything here to eat? And they give him a piece of fish. And what does he do with it? He eats it. Peter looks back on this episode in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 41, and he says, we ate and we drank with him after he rose from the dead. Dead people do not eat. Jesus eats. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. He lives, he eats. Maybe our new formula, you know, earlier this morning, we greeted one another, he is risen. Maybe our new formula should be, hallelujah, Christ is eating. He is eating indeed. Alleluia. Easter is a movable feast. The date moves, but the message stays the same. Jesus rose from the dead. He's living and he's eating. Eating is a celebration of life. Your Easter meal, your every meal, your every morsel is a celebration of life. Jesus rose and through faith, in the resurrected Jesus, you will rise as well. This, food, this feast moves around the calendar in the month of our civil Gregorian calendar of March or April. But sometimes Easter shows up in the most unexpected time and place. A friend of mine told me how Easter so showed up during early January one year. This is what he told me. He says, when my wife's grandma died, we went down for the memorial service. The worship space for the congregation is very multi-purpose. Everything is movable. Basically, it's a gymnasium with nice movable chairs and an altar area which is very flexible. 
We remembered Grandma's life of faith. We celebrated Jesus' faithfulness to her. We heard the message of Christ's victory over the grave. And we sang songs that gave expression to our grief, even as they pointed us to God's promises in hope. When the service was over, the family rose and walked out of the worship space down the corridor and out the front door. And we walked across the parking lot to a small memorial garden where Grandma's ashes were laid to rest to rest until Jesus calls her name and and she will rise. After we interred her ashes, we we turned around and walked right back into the worship space. But while we were burying Grandma's mortal remains in the garden, back inside the church, everything was moved. We stepped into the same space, but now it was a feast. The chairs were all re- rearranged and tables were brought in. A, a buffet line was set up with juice and water and coffee and salads and main courses and desserts. It was a feast. That place of mourning from moments before was transformed into an Easter celebration, a feast of victory. So Easter breaks out in all kinds of different places, doesn't it? Even and especially at a funeral celebrating the life of a child of God. It was a meal celebrating life because every meal is a celebration of life. Living things eat. Every meal, great and small, is a celebration of life. Easter is a movable feast. The festival of Easter will not officially show up again until next spring, April 20th to be specific, but the feast of victory comes among us week after week, Sunday after Sunday, meal after meal. Eating is a blessing of creation, an experiential joy of created life. Every sip, every bite, are a celebration of life because Jesus lives and Jesus eats. Easter is a movable feast. Wherever you go for the rest of your life, Easter stays with you. May the hope of the new resurrected reality move you, carry you, sustain you until the day when we will all be transformed and we will eat together in the heavenly banquet hall as dinner guests of the living king. Alleluia. Christ is eating. Alleluia. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Let us stand to proclaim our unity of Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the mission of sins, 
and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our special prayers this morning, we want to remember the family of Joy Lutheran Church and Pastor Trey Sanson as yesterday he was installed as the new pastor of Joy Lutheran Church. We also remember in prayer uh, Pastor Mark Brunette as he is, uh, he, somehow when I saw him yesterday, he looked younger <laughs> in retirement. Um, we also continue to remember our those that are uh, facing challenges such as Broco and Berndt and Nancy. Let us pray for the whole church of God and Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forever. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, Give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confidential, confident joy in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us and among all the nations of the world. Especially do we pray for Pastor Nelson Hernandez and Cristo Mi Salvador and Pastor Trey Sansom and the people of joy. Lord, in your mercy, give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by, the, by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Greg, our governor. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands. And Restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless, that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy upon Broco, Berndt, Nancy, Leonard, and all those that we name in our hearts those in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your Son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence in the sacrament of the altar and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We worship the Lord by bringing forth our offerings. <coughs>
Let us stand. hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that cleanse hearts with cleansed hearts, we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy. in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away
Understand. thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, he giveth, for he taketh, God is.
You may be seated just for a moment. It's so good to see all of you this morning. So glad that each one of you came here today. Your presence here truly is an answer to our prayers. Um, we do have fellowship time. We have uh, donuts and coffee and kolaches and uh, lots of smiles and laughter and uh, visiting. And so I want you to stick around. Uh, we do have, uh, if you haven't had a chance to sign in our guest registry, that would be great, especially legibly, so write better than I do, okay? Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Game night is this Saturday coming up, and it's going to be at 3 o'clock. 3? Okay. Uh, so uh, it, it's... Uh, it's an event that you don't want to miss out on. Yes, ma'am. Mom and Albert. Wow. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Kathy and Albert. Happy anniversary to you. That's a good number. 12 is a biblical number there. Yes. Oh, yeah. So we those songs are for you, too. And it's 27, so that's a double and a seven. And oh, God, yeah, that's great. All right, Linda. All right, if you would turn to the people right and left of you, front and back of you, thank those people for being here this morning. 